Welcome to weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. The first one is some news from the FAA symposium and the AAM summit that's going on right now. The PICA Pelican spray that gets FAA approval. And then finally, uh, China is imposing some export restrictions on some drone products. And we'll talk more about what that means. Let's get to it. All right, your first story this week is an update from the FAA Symposium and the AAM Summit. Uh, our good friend Vic Moss from the Drone Service Provider Alliance has been very helpful in writing what he's seen so far and what he's heard from the summit. Uh, a few bullet points that uh, we want to discuss today. First off, the FAA seems to be interested in data from pilots regarding BV loss, uh, but there doesn't seem to be a plan in order to gather that data, nor does the FAA know exactly for sure what kind of data they they need. Uh, the FAA acknowledged that also there is a shortage of remote ID modules, uh, and they said there will probably be some more announcements before the deadlines, uh, and that all things are on the table. Uh, the FAA also said that uh, because an app on a cell phone doesn't pick the remote ID message doesn't necessarily mean that the operator is not in compliance. We actually received that question quite a bit from people, um, and we also get a lot of questions about which module is good and which one is not. Uh, we are doing a full test right now. Uh, as we speak, we just came back from being gone for a whole week, but uh, now we are going to resume our testing and be posting a video very soon. Uh, so you know which one, well, which one works best for you. I don't know that there is uh, a good one or a bad one necessarily. They all kind of have the same purpose, but uh, I think there is different ones for different application. Uh, so far, that's the news of what we've seen from uh, the uh, symposium. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Also, make sure that uh, if you want additional information, uh, Vic uh, is going to be posting posting more stuff on dspalliance.org. So make sure you go visit the website and read a synopsis. Uh, hopefully he does that every night after he comes back from the show. Uh, I know from experience that's a lot of work. So Vic, we uh, appreciate the effort. All right, the second story this week is a large drone, uh, 1,320 pounds to be exact. Uh, we previously covered a Pika Pelican crash in California over a year ago now, but it seems that Pika has come out with a new aircraft that's called the Pelican Spray. Uh, this is a crop dusting aircraft with 700 pounds of payload capacity, uh, 30 minutes of operational endurance, including a 10 minute reserve, a cruise speed between 60 and 70 knots, and then runway requirements of uh, 650 feet. Now the large UAS is powered by a 18 kilowatt hour battery and then four electric motors that have a fixed pitch propeller uh, to complete the mission. In terms of size, the Pelican spray is 20 feet long and also 30 feet uh, wide as far as the wingspan, uh, meaning that the wingspan is actually as much as our Diamond DA40 uh, that we use for travel and for training on the airplane side of things, and it's about six feet shorter. So this is not a small uh, aircraft in this case. All right, and for your final story, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, China is imposing uh, export restriction on certain drone parts. Now, this is from China to other countries. Uh, at this time, DJI is not affected or any other Chinese company that we could find uh, that uh, create drones. But the Chinese government is restricting the sale of lasers, uh, communication equipment, drone engines, and uh, anti-UAV systems. The uh, restriction covers military usages and also applications, which uh, DJI DJI does not actually produce. Uh, DJI is quoted as saying, uh, we have never designed or manufactured products or equipment for military use, uh, nor have we ever marketed or sold our products for use in military conflicts or wars in any country. Uh, I'm sure this will be a, a controversial statement, uh, seeing the number of drones that are, are being used uh, in Ukraine right now uh, on both sides of the conflict. Now, we'll keep you up to date, and if we see anything else about this or any other restrictions that may affect commercial or consumer drones uh, in the United States. And uh, one last thing before we go, we just came back from Oshkosh. Actually, this is kind of the first day in the office today uh, for a lot of us. And uh, we wanted to say a big thank you to all of you that stopped by, uh, took pictures, uh, came to grab some goodies and uh, some lanyards and all the good stuff that we had available. Uh, we had a ton of drone and airplane students coming over. Uh, I was amazed at the feedback that we got from all of you. Uh, I was amazed at how many of you were excited to see uh, me and the team, quite frankly, uh, willing to uh, ask a whole lot of questions, uh, sit in the aircraft that we uh, brought for the event, 
and uh, just all in all talk about shop. And that was uh, that just made our day, quite frankly. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, I, I hear, uh, uh, I've, <laughs> you don't know me, but I know you really well. I hear that a lot when I go to uh, different shows. And uh, it's just really cool to hear all of your stories. So thank you for stopping by. And uh, we hope that we'll see you at another event. And that's it. That's all I have for you this week. As always, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.